Impressive win for Georgetown, their tenth of the season. They go to two and zero in the Big East. Time now for our second of our double dip: Creighton and Seton Hall. Let's get you out to Prudential Center. Already in progress, Joseph Larkin, Dick Stock. And we want to uh, join our viewers on FS1, Fox Sports 1, as we just getting underway here at Seton Hall. Dick Stockton and Jim Spinarkle, Creighton and Seton Hall. First possession of the game for the Blue Jays. And keep an eye on the way the big fella, McDermott. There he is, moving without the ball. And a great pass that time from Grant Gibbs, who's a great playmaker, too. This team plays sound, fundamental ball. Does Creighton coming in 11 and 2 on the year? They sure do, and they like to shoot the ball from the outside. And I mean, long range threes are a big facet of their game. Here's Mobley at the point, and the foul is called. Tough defense that time, and the foul is on Austin Chapman. Chapman's first foul. He's a junior from the Colony in Texas. And Dick, I think that's going to be one of the interesting parts for Seton Hall. If they're going to be successful this afternoon, how many free throw attempts will they get? In the last game out for Creighton, they only shot four against Marquette. That's a rugged game. So they're an outside team. Seton Hall has to play this down deep. Beat Providence in a double overtime thriller in the Big East opener. And firing from the corner and missing the three was Brandon Mobley. Here's Chapman, good playmaker. Rocky, he's the three-point expert. And the turnaround. And the miss by McDermott. And another foul on Austin Chapman. Picks up two early ones. And with the new rules, that's a good way for Gibbs to get this team at the foul line a lot this afternoon. And you look at the defense, but watch the fundamentals. You see that reverse pivot from McDermott just then. He reverses out of it when a guy is right on top of him to get his shot off. Really understands this the fundamentals of this game. Devin Brooks has gone in for Chapman, a junior college All-America who's made an impact. A junior from Harlem here in New York. And his former high school coach is an assistant for Seton Hall. Here's Oliver coming off the screen. Ryan Oliver, the swim man, who's averaging over 12 a game, gives Seton Hall the lead by one. And Alva's a guy who's really helped Seton Hall because he gets to extend the floor a little bit with those shots, allowing a guy like Gibbs to break people down. And the shot from outside, and it is missed by Managa. And battling is Oliver for the boards. And a Creighton foul. When you take a look, the little simple pass off the screen, down deep. And you get some good rhythm away from the, sh the uh, basket. And Oliver just takes that right foot, plants it down, and gets a good shot off. So the basket counts. There is Greg McDermott, who came from northern Iowa, along with his son. Son came right after he did. The ball through the net was hit, and they counted the field goal. And the steal by McDermott off of Mobley. Here's McDermott. Lost control for the moment. Crowd wanted to travel. And here is the shot from outside, and it is missed by Rogge. A little out of control outside also. Brooks to McDermott, hitting the three. Doug McDermott coming in, averaging over 24 points a game. And the one thing about McDermott we've seen already, Dick, is his ability to show us how he worked on his footwork as a young player. We saw the step away. We saw that shot coming down the floor, getting his feet set before he shoots. Oliver getting it in and trying to overplay was Devin Brooks and the field goal by Mobley. And it is seven to five. Little fancy work by Brooks in the paint. He'll shoot that. And it is. McDermott missing from outside. If you lay back a couple of feet when he has the ball at the three-point strike, just like that, he will take that. Gibbs takes a three and hits it. Sterling Gibbs, who you talked about at the outset. The transfer from Texas giving Seton Hall a one-point lead. And what that does also, Dick, with Gibbs, when he's shooting the ball and he doesn't shoot at it, from long range that often. But now if you start to go out and get him, watch McDermott set himself up. Footwork, perfect. 
posture perfect and the release just right on the money. Really understands how to play the game. And now Gibbs, you go behind the screen. What does Gibbs do? He recognizes that when Brooks disappears behind the screen and he buries it on him. Had a delay and the officials give a warning inside. Here is Rage going out. Post play, McDermott. And McDermott manages the basket over Alda. Tough field goal over the 6'9 Alda. McDermott has seven. Out in pretty good position, too, just then that trip and made McDermott try to search and find the basket. And here's Edwin who comes into the game and he connects Fuquan Edwin, 6'6 senior from Patterson, who's superb on both ends of the floor, Jim, and gives the Pirates a lead by two. Yeah, and Edwin's he's been struggling with a knee injury, so he hasn't played as much recently, but a solid defense. Defensive player also. And driving in off balance is McDermott. He could score him anyway. Tied at 11. Going to his left that time across the middle of the floor. How does he find the time to put his shoulders back in play to get a shot off? He just understands how to use his body. Edwin looking inside to Outer. And Gibbs hit a three earlier. In and out this time. And the rebound by Rogge. Oh, all alone. Easy. Rolls off, but he's there for the tip-in. Only one game this year, he really struggled. He was two for 11, and only seven points against George Washington. His worst game right. by far. Exactly. And from a play-by-play -play guy's perspective, that was his easiest shot of the afternoon, and he misses it off both of us. I thought that was an easy one. Jimmy's used to being challenged a little bit, don't exactly. you think? He threw us off there. Yeah, you may have to yank this guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. We've already had six lead changes. Edwin going around McDermott with a great feed and out against the field goal. McDermott standing as Edwin made a great move around him. That oh, was your call perfect just then. McDermott stood up. He locked the knees and he was in trouble as soon as he stood up. Here's McDermott guarded by Mobley and gets fouled. What a quick move baseline there, Jim. Yep, understands how to get his shoulders around somebody also. So you take a look, Seton Hall looking to shoot, as does Creighton from long range. And when the Pirates are knocking them back, they can be a dangerous team. And look at this guy use his body, his shoulders to finish it off. Nice start for McDermott. And welcome back to Fox College Hoops. And we're back on FS1. Thanks for joining us. Presentation of Big East Basketball brought to you by the New York Life Insurance Company. Tied at 13 in a tight game early on, Jim. And the pace going up and down pretty good, I thought, because one, one of the things at Seton Hall when we talked about Gibbs going against McDermott's squad, we figured that he would try to push the action. But Seton Hall so far is shooting the ball pretty well in terms of getting their shots, five of eight. So Kevin Willard happy with that. Three-point shots, though, three for six so far for Seton Hall right now. Creighton only at one for four. So here's Doug McDermott, who comes into the game with 41 straight free throws and now 42 and that is a school record. So with all of the good things he does, impeccable from the free throw line as well. He's 12 and they're 14 points to start. You know what, he's on a pace for 70 points. <laughs> Would you like to see that? I think it's 72, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, tell, don't tell the Pirates that. Exactly. Creighton by two. Cena into the corner. Mobley. Yeah, see, it's man to man, but the Pirates aren't doing a whole lot to force the action with the ball. There you go, a little better there, but not much. Plenty of time on the track. And the drive by Edwin. Got go good drive in there. Coming down with it is Gibbs. And they're a pretty good defensive rebounding team. Great. They box out very well as a unit. Nice diagonal. And a three, three-point basket by Managa. Yahans Managa, who is a senior from Ottawa, making his 100th career start today. And coming back with a three is Brian Oliver. So now three-point happy and a great spin move in there, but no basket by Brooks. Gets the ball back. Managa. Double team, what a pass to Brooks for the field goal. 
And a great decision by Managatu just then to put the ball on the floor. Don't settle. You see so many times guys will settle for the 15, 18-footer when one dribble will get a better shot, in that case, a layup. And also they would try to drive and, and make the basket even though there are two defenders because right. they feel close enough. Exactly. So Creighton by four with the ball. Uh, how about McDermott's pass to that last time when he was in the post and hit that diagonal across the court? He does that so often when he gets double teams coming his way. Team style, beautiful to watch. Leading Big E scoring team at 82 points a game. And here's Brooks. Brooks hits a three. Devin Brooks already making an impact. Third on the team in scoring. And a timeout called by Kevin Willard. So Creighton has moved out to a seven point lead, the biggest of the game, and will be back from the Prudential Center in a moment. And Jim Spinarkle, you've been talking about the passing of Creighton, which, of course, uh, you know, may be a hidden part of the game with good teams do it so well. They do. And one of the things, when you when you scout Creighton, everybody says, well, they shoot the ball from the three-point stripe. And, yes, they do do that well. But we've just seen a couple of examples where guys are putting it on the floor to draw defenders into the middle of the floor, and then they kick it out. So we saw one go down low for the little one-two dribble layup. One, two, dribble, kick to the outside for jumpers. Nice variations. Five assists on nine baskets for Creighton, which speaks to that. Harold Carlos, a junior from Latvia, has come into the game, number 13, going inside. Auda with the turnaround, and he gets the basket. Patrick Auda from the Czech Republic, and back starting. Yeah, he missed six games with a foot injury and then came off the bench for a yeah, couple. Even last year, Dickey was hurt last year, and I think that's a thing that Seton Hall has to do. 29 blocks as a team for Creighton coming into this game, so they have to challenge them down deep. Out of committing the foul away from the ball, his first 13 foul, and uh, Kevin Willard, most talent he's had, and of course his father, Ralph Willard, is a uh, the head coach associate with Rick Pitino in Louisville right now. Good friends, all of them. Exactly. Right now, let's take a look at the AT&T Impossible feat. Let's go back to 1989 when one Michigan Wolverine set the NCAA tournament on fire. His name was Glenn Rice. He scored 184 points over six games, an NCAA tournament record that still stands today. More importantly, he led Michigan to their first and only national title. Does that bring up the name Ramil Robinson at some point? Believe it does. Uh, I don't know if the Seton Hall Pirate fans that are close by us, Dick, want to hear us talking about that. <laughs> that was the championship game. Don't talk to P.J. Carlissimo oh, about that one. He has other thoughts. And McDermott hitting a three. McDermott now with 16 of the 26 Creighton points. And so many people will watch McDermott and say, okay, he hit a three-point shot, he can shoot the ball. But did you notice how he caught the ball, ball fake from long range, gets a guy to go by him, one dribble to the left and knocks it down. Solid move basketball-wise. Stefan Manga is in for Seton Hall. Will Artino checks in for Creighton. Edwin trying to get it inside to Manga. Here's Gibbs. This is a three. Yep. Defenders sliding behind that screen. Gibbs is shooting it. And the runner by Brooks doesn't fall. And the rebound taken down by Carlos. And the offensive foul is called against Seton Hall as Brooks takes a charge nicely. Yep. Gibbs runs him over as he crosses half court. There's the ball fake. One dribble. Nice extension again. You know, Dick, a lot of times people refer to, and, you, and you've heard it in different sports, that's a good basketball player, a good football player. And people say, well, it's basketball. So every play is a basketball play. But the way the game has changed a lot, now it's a lot of plays are athletic more than they are fundamentals. So I got to bring that up and say, when you refer to McDermott, he makes a lot of throwback fundamental basketball plays. Yeah, he may not be an athlete that can play bad football, right. per se, but he does all the things you need for to be an outstanding basketball player. Right on. Here's McDermott. Started by Mobley, goes right around Mobley and gets the basket. No chance for Mobley, and Creighton is up by 10. He's out thinking people, too. He's got Mobley thinking, I'm going to shoot the jumper just then. What does Mobley do? He comes back out, stands up, tries to defend a little bit, and goes right by him. And McDermott 
with the passing, inside play, three-point shooting, and now he has 18. Jim, how's this for consistency for four years? Well, you want to obviously see growth and you want to see maturity as a kid goes from a freshman to senior year, but this is just staggering in terms of the improvement that we've seen with McDermott. And you know what's interesting, too? I had a chance to talk to his father before the game, and I said, why, why did your son and how did your son develop all these skills, not shooting the ball, but the, the basics that we were just talking about? He said, well, he grew up in a basketball family. He was watching the film with me for years and years. He's been around the gym, and he just picked up on everything, and he added to it, and he worked at it to become a better player. And he gets his first breather of the game as Oliver misses from outside, and the rebound by Artino. So Isaiah Zerden, 6'2 freshman from St. Louis Park, Minnesota, has come into the game replacing McDermott. Here he is with the ball. Cena guarding him. And a drive to the basket Whoa. and missing it. And the follow by Madagod. Seven to nothing run for Creighton. They're up by their biggest lead, 12 points, and now a foul at the other end. Yeah, that's what Gibbs does so well. He comes down, and while you're thinking you're scoring, he's coming down the other way. You know, an interesting stat, too, coming in to kind of highlight Creighton. They shoot the free throws. Dick, they've shot 248 on the season. Gibbs has taken 121 by himself. So he's he's staggering in terms of not only getting to the line, but forcing the free throw attempts and the fouls against the other team. And the foul was on Brooks Outa, checks back in. A little more size in there now for Seton Hall. Knocking the ball away is Madaga. Be afraid to drive it. Cena with a fake. And the quick shot by Oliver. He hits it to three for Brian Oliver who had 18 points to lead Seton Hall and they went over Providence in that Big East opener. And if you're afraid and you're not going to go by people with the ball, you're not going to get those jumpers. The guards have to continue to go by people on the perimeter if you're Seton Hall. Oliver's third three in this first half. Just under nine minutes to go in the first 20 minutes. No McDermott a little stagnant right now. And Zierden going up and the ball knocked away. And it was last touched. Yeah, here's that one or two dribbles, right? And look at defensively. You have to collapse the floor. You're taught that as a young age. If somebody goes by somebody out front, help your guy out. Go off, the, off your man, slide to the middle, and that's when you get a kick out. McDermott back in as Artino leads. Whoa. And a good block that time by Mobley, but McDermott gets it back. McDermott, does he face the challenge? The fall away, air ball. And the crowd loves it. Oh, they sure do. They love the end. The extra punch that Mobley gave defensively just then. Tried a little Dirk Nowitzki fall away, too. To, oh! Oh, into the fourth row! <laughs> Where, where'd that ball go? Knocking some popcorn <laughs> out of somebody's hand. Wow. So that is the fourth turnover by Seton Hall. Zero for Creighton right, right now early on, and they don't turn it over a lot, Dick. They're about 11 on average, and that's their style. That's the way they play. Gibbs looking to a cutting McDermott. Double team, he releases it. Whoa, Rogge has it blocked by Mobley. I think that's the first three-point attempt Rogge has tried today. <laughs> No, long range, that's what he does. He shoots the ball and Mobley just closes on him. Really goes after it in a hurry. And to your point, 105 shots taken by Rocky this year. 100, 100 of them have been three-point shots. And, of course, he's the second all-time to Kyle Korver, the outstanding three-point scorer Creighton had had a few years ago. And a good anticipation and a steal. And that is the first turnover of the game. Kukwan Edwin picks off that pass. So Creighton turns it over with just a under eight minutes to go in the half. Howda, McDermott all over him, puts it up anyway, kind of forced that shot. Look at McDermott looking over his shoulder. Grant Gibbs gets it down low. Managa, three point falls off, and good hustle again. Edwin playing alert ball now. And that steal, the last trip down the floor. M Mobley misses the three. Hey. 
Gibbs goes right around Ryan Oliver. Yeah, you see, and, and Seton Hall is looking to pick up this tempo just a little bit right now. We've seen Creighton come back one or two times in a row and really not be afraid to go after them also with the pace. Oh, nice squeeze. Gibbs with a pretty move. So a great move by Sterling Gibbs. Seton Hall prep Brad spent one year at Texas. The lead is nine for Creighton. Fall away again. McDermott has missed two fall aways of all of the different array of shots he's tried to. Oh, there's a little bump. Gibbs, nothing doing. No foul. Zerden. Rage. And he misses the three. Gibbs the rebound. New clock. Oh, boy. Zierden with a drive. How about that little flip, too, Dick? That's the fastest way to get it up to the basket when a big guy's coming for the block. Take it underhanded to the glass. Smart play right there. So Creighton back into control. Zierden, the red shirt freshman. Biggest lead for Creighton has been 12. They're up by 11. Auda with the lefty push mm -hmm. from three. Just couldn't get it to get a little flat also with the push. Zierden is open for three. Well, when they're open, they will shoot it. There's no question about it. Prolific in three-point shooting in the country, not just the Big East, are these Creighton Blue Jays trying to make it 12 out of 14 with a road win today. Gibbs against Rage off the dribble. Good move against the big guy to try to beat him off the dribble. So we have a timeout. And when we come back, we have a couple of upsets in the making. It's Creighton leading Seton Hall. Jersey. All right, Mike Hill, a couple of upsets to watch, although uh, we have seen both of these teams trailing and then yep. coming up big as we take a look at our game summary. As uh, Creighton leading by 11, Doug McDermott has 18 points. And uh, the 10 second chance points in this game. How about no offensive rebounds for the Pirates? It's one of the things with Creighton, you know, when we talk about the physicality and the tough play in the Big East, the traditional Big East that's carried over. They go up against Marquette in their first game. They win that game by a substantial margin. Whoa, Gibbs comes up way short on his free throw, but they out-rebounded Marquette by two. So. A team that's not built to be phys real physical, as Greg McDermott might say. They still hung in there pretty nicely off the glass. Neither team has gone to the line in this game. One out of two for the first free throw attempts for Seton Hall. Creighton just two for two themselves. Lead is 10, winding down to five minutes remaining in the first half. Dick Stockton and Jim Spinarkle here at the Prudential Center in Newark. Ball knocked away, same way, last touched by Seton Hall because both of these teams are not really aggressive teams driving to the basket and they haven't been doing that much only four team fouls apiece right now 15 minutes or so into this half here is Brooks pretty move by Devin Brooks coming home and has nine first half points oh, maybe he heard me nobody's driving to the basket he decides to go on my cue shooting has been outstanding now in the high 40s. Nice play. Steele, Managa, Brooks, and stripped away from McDermott by Mobley, I believe. Yep, a little late on the pass. Gibbs the other way gets the lay in. That's Gibbs being sterling, if you will, Dick. Not to throw a punt at you there, but getting down the floor in a hurry. The reaction time doesn't work. I caught it. <laughs> Ten point lead now, 36 to 26. Here's McDermott. Started seven for ten in the game, has missed his last three, so he's human, I think. We better double check. <laughs> Here's McDermott, the ten on the clock, Mobley hanging there with him. Long three by Brooks. And the rebound by Oliver. Need a good shot right here if you're Seton Hall. Get a couple consecutive buckets coming down. And make sure you at least get a good shot off. Seton Hall. If nothing else, would like to get it to well under double digits if they can before intermission. Ten on 
the shot clock now. Nice skip. Edwin fakes and goes over Gibbs way off. Never set himself up to shoot the ball. He wanted it and it was wide open, but never got the footwork set. Here's Brooks wending his way in. Feed and Artino. And we'll have a foul timeout. So 18 for McDermott, nine for Brooks, the two top scorers for the Blue Jays. I'm Mike Hill. Coming up at the half, we show you the top two teams in the nation on the ropes at home. Did Syracuse and Arizona survive? Plus some close calls in the Big East. We'll show you those highlights as well. But right now, let's get back to Dick and Jim in New Jersey. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Great by 10. And Jim, uh, right now, Creighton, after shooting 60% at the start, three for their last 11. Is it the Seton Hall defense tightening, or is it just missing open looks? Uh, I think a little bit. They've had a couple open looks, but I think Seton Hall has gotten a little bit more aggressive on McDermott. They're faking at him, and they're running double teams at him, but they're also faking, forcing him to give the ball up and pass the basketball. That diagonal, the last one we saw that was picked off, that was by design to play the passing lanes. That whistle before the timeout was a kick ball violation. 2-3 look right now zone-wise. You gotta make sure you find the shooters. Managa has a screen from Brooks. McDermott spinning his way, losing his footing. Great effort by everybody getting on the floor. And a timeout called by Creighton. They had the possession arrow anyway, but they use their first timeout. That was a terrific effort by Edwin getting down there. Watch the spin and watch right now. Edwin goes for the basketball. And they gave him that call. He just barely got the possession too, Dick. Well, tomorrow, Fox College Hoops returns with a doubleheader as USC takes on UCLA, followed by 10th-ranked Oregon battling 20th-ranked Colorado. Coverage begins tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Great time of year, isn't it, when the conferences just crank it up. You're going to see a lot of good ball today and the competitive basketball. And the Big East still trying to figure out these teams, which I think is interesting. Seton Hall and Creighton going at it. Who are these two, right? Well, you better get comfortable with each other. You're right, Jim. Villanova was the one ranked team. Right. They were eighth and lost to Syracuse, dropped to 11, which is mm -hmm. where they are right now. But uh, now you see the teams that really have a, a shot. Creighton has to be considered one of them. I do. I think so. I think, you know, you're going to talk about McDermott. He deserves every, every um, comment that you make about him in terms of his player. But his team... And the guys on the floor, sometimes you look by him. He's got a quality team here for Creighton. McDermott ends an 0 for 3 drought with a follow basket, has 20 points in the game. Remember, averaging a little over 24. Good for second in the country coming in. Nice little set just then, too, from out of bounds. They roll off that double team down low, and he just flies away from the basket. Jaron Cena out at the point. They go back to Edwin. Good reaction, too, right there by Brooks. Cena drives. Boy, Brooks really handles Cena well when he tried for the three. Cena trying to knock it away from behind. Gibbs, foul. And I'll take a look at McDermott out of bounds right now. Kind of a little sleepy type play. They get him to drift into the middle of the lane, and he finishes it off with that touch never coming down. The understanding of that if he brings it down, there's a better chance he'll get the next one blocked. You know, he's a walk-on now because, you know, in order, to get, in order to get Grant Gibbs in, who's a sixth-year man, you know, they actually had to pay for the, the education here for this guy, McDermott, in his last year for his father, paying some $48,000 for that right. Doesn't he get employee rights there or anything? <laughs> Mobley goes out of the game. Well, however it works. That's right. You know what's interesting, too, speaking about Creighton and their squad? They get their, their home base in terms of their fans. We got the chance to see the Marquette game. I don't know if you saw much of that. 17-5 yes. they get, and they have just a terrific following. They have 15,000 season ticket holders that are sold out for their game. So great atmosphere. The Big East teams are really going to have their hands full, I think, going into Creighton. 
which they probably don't know a whole lot about. No, Manga with a turnaround, like Oklahoma City right. in the NBA. In the NBA, exactly. You come in and say, okay, well, we got a college town on our hands in terms of the fans, and they're really going after it. 40 to 28. Moments ago, Creighton had their biggest lead of the game. Now it's 12, and here's McDermott with a drive, and here is Cena coming out of the action. Jaron Cena out of lost it manga with another lay-in showing his toughness inside stefan manga from france and to your point a couple of minutes ago dick i think you mentioned it about the five minute mark they want to try to get this thing to 10 or under seton hall they need a stop right now to keep the confidence building for them under a minute and a half remaining you got to double team him down there. Good work. Knock it away. Last touch by Seton Hall with 18 on the clock. And now watch McDermott. If he's double teamed, when the guy passes the ball to him, if it's his man that double teams, he'll slide to the basket and watch for a little bounce pass layup type of cut. Always dangerous, the guy throwing the ball in. Yep. Brooks with the drive. Good. Didn't get the shot off. And here is with four on the shot clock. And here is Managa hitting. And the technical foul has been called against Kevin Willard. A technical foul against Willard. Because he thought this should have been a violation against Creighton on Brooks's drive. Exactly. And, and right there, Kevin Willard was up. There was no question about it. Good recognition on your part to catch it across the official made the call too from on our side which is the opposite side of the seton hall bench you know jim x-ray vision really <laughs> does help huh <laughs> covers up a lot of things <laughs> so they get they get their share of points on this play though don't they dick uh, they, and you know uh, again speaking to your point of seton hall trying to get it under 10 you talked about the big stop this is the worst case scenario absolutely now, sometimes a coach's technical, as you've seen over the years, will spurt on a team, if you will. But now there's only a minute left, so there's not a whole lot of time for that to really factor in. And Kevin Willard has been annoyed at a couple of plays this afternoon. Kevin also coached for Rick Pitino with the Boston Celtics and the University of Louisville. Played at Western Kentucky in Pitt, and his father was said associate head coach for Rick Pitino at Louisville. So let's take a look. We're going to see... Okay, it's going to be on the drive. And there's the outside shot jumper. I think it was, that was the three-point shot, but I think Kevin was complaining Brooks about the drive. drive. Yeah, Brooks's drive prior to right that. The turn, yeah, that's what started it. And then, obviously, you want the ball back, and a guy knocks a three down. It just compounds the way you're thinking as a coach. So now it's a 15-point lead, and they get the ball back as... Rocky gets it back, so the largest lead with under a minute remaining in this first half. Creighton, by the way, of their 11 wins, all but one has been by double digits. And they'll sit in this. They don't have the last shot right here, but they'll be patient. Gibbs goes out. Managa, short. And plenty of time for Seton Hall. Getting it up for it is Edwin. Here's Oliver for three. That'll do it. That'll help Seton Hall. 45-33, still a 12-point game, playing for the last shot. Yeah, and they had the last shot just then, but they also had that five-on-three numbers that you mentioned, Dick, so I like the shot. Take a chance. Good work here by Ada. Ada fighting for the loose ball as Raga holds on, and that'll be it. McDermott gets 22 points and seven rebounds in a brilliant first half. And the Creighton Blue Jays, who are looking for their seventh straight win, have taken the lead 45 to 33 over Seton Hall. And I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, Mike Hill and Austin Crozier will be with you in our LA studio to bring you up to date on a busy day in college hoops. Welcome back to Newark, New Jersey, where the Creighton Blue Jays lead the Seton Hall Pirates 45 to 33 as we get set to start the second half. And of course, Doug McDermott with 22 points, nearly half 
of the points for Creighton. But I guess the big question, Jim Sparnarkle, would be how does Seton Hall get back in the game? Well, I think one of the things they want to do is they still want to mix up the defenses against McDermott to keep the ball out of his hands and double team him and fake double team also. But they have to get to the line, Seton Hall, a little bit more. Dick. They've only gotten to the line twice, and they're one of two with Gibbs shooting. But if you take a look at McDermott, yeah, he can shoot the basketball. We talk about that, but I like watching him away from the ball, how he sets himself up, why he positions himself so well to get things going. And at the end of the day, he really can shoot the ball from deep range that we know. So he has made some nice passes. Passes, maybe not all for assists, but he triggers the basketball around the, the horn for these guys. Seton Hall has outshot Creighton. And they outshot him for three, but look at that 15 to nothing big gap in second chance points. Absolutely, and that's the work. You know, everybody talks about the rebounding where they built to be a Big East type of rugged team. Well, eight offensive rebounds is not a bad number against Seton Hall. So Creighton starting out. Chapman, who picked up two early fouls, the point guard, and they get a quick basket with Managa getting the hoop. 47 to 33, largest lead was 15 toward the end of the half, and there's a nice drive that time by Sterling Gibbs. Keep in mind, too, Dick, with we didn't mention Gene Teague, big power forward center for Seton Hall. Right. That hurt in their Lafayette game is not playing in today's game. So a whole different look defensively and rebounding-wise for Seton Hall. And there's McDermott with a lay-in. That's his 24th point. Devin Brooks, by the way, is second with nine. Brian Oliver leads the Pirates with 12. And he's hit three threes. And now, field goal by Edwin, the three-pointer there. I'll tell you, Seton Hall shooting well from downtown. Yeah, they sure are, and this is a clinic so far in the first the sec first two possessions here with the backdoor cuts going to the basket. A three-point shooting team, Creighton, going to the hoop. And wow. Managa with a drive, misses it. Out of getting the rebound into the hands of Gibbs. Edwin, can he do it again? Not this time, and Managa clears. Wow, you have to live with that if you're Greg McDermott, a, a missed layup. Guys never want to miss him, but they have three in a row right now cooking. They should have six points on the board. And Gibbs battling his way in, gets the offensive rebound. Plenty of time for McDermott for the three, and he misses. He's better when he's challenged. Yep, it, two guys down on the floor. What's going on? Up, oh, one of the Seton Hall players. And Gibbs with a drive, and basket will count. I don't know if you caught it, Dick, because the ball came back down this way. I looked up and I looked over to my you right. You said there were two guys? Yeah, with, with the Creighton team, all of a sudden the coaching staff got up and said, what are they getting up for? Well, Edwin went flying through their yeah. bench over there, and he disappeared. I was like, they were trying to help him get up. Yeah, the Gatorade <laughs> spilled, and, uh, you know, I could see that after you win a title. <laughs> but, but not in the second Big East game of the year. <laughs> we we I, hope, I hope we don't get one. A little bath. <laughs> Yeah, he just disappeared. He was in the second row, I believe. Six on the clock. And Gibbs comes up empty with the three. Yeah, different game to start right here in the first couple of minutes. Seton Hall has come out. Maybe that technical did have a little carryover for Kevin Willard. Oh, Gibbs draws the foul nicely. So Sterling Gibbs penetrating brilliantly early on in the second half, draws the foul, and will shoot a pair. Yeah, and Seton Hall has to play this game going towards the, the 10 a little bit more. Get in the paint, get your penetration working, and that's going to allow layups. It's going to have opportunities at the free throw line and also that kick out for their jumpers more in the sequence of their offense. And their point guard, Austin Chapman, picks up another foul, picked up two early ones, sending him to the bench for the rest of the first half, picks up his third here. And coming into the game now will be Devin Brooks, as we mentioned, from Harlem and has tickets for 14 of his friends and family on hand for this game, and he's responded with nine first-half points. And Chapman going out, too, Dick, is a guy who doesn't turn the basketball over. And he's got a two-to-one over the last couple of years throughout his career in terms of very, very good assist versus turnover ratio. So let's see how Creighton handles it without him on the floor. Seton Hall has scored six straight points. Long one by Raga. 
And that's Rogi. Yeah, yeah, that's what he does. He shoots the basketball 50% from out there in terms of coming into this game. First three of the game, he's one for four now. And the ball's knocked away by Managa. And I said Raga, meaning, uh, he's going to try another three. He's missed them all so far. But Raggy made this. There's that jumper. Spread the floor again. It opens up drives to the basket. Rocky guarding Auda. Playing tight on Oliver, who's hit three threes. Uh, if they're going to come out and play the shooters, this guy has to do something with the basketball. Mop. Check that Mobley going in, off the glass, gets the offensive board, fights his way in. Seaton Hall getting his first offensive rebound of the game right here, and aggressive. Good things happen, and he recognized, first of all, that the shot clock is working against him. Now, sometimes you don't go back up with the ball because there's two and three guys there, but you have to throw your shoulders. See the shoulders come up, they're going towards the basket, and when that happens, it's a, a strong, aggressive shot. 99% of the times, you're going to get to the line if you throw your shoulders at the basket. Foul is on McDermott, his first, and Brandon Mobley, junior from Savannah, has scored 16 points in each of the last two games, and last year only in five appearances had shoulder surgery. And he hits both free throws, and it's down to a nine-point game. And they just got to find a way to creep, make it down to six or so to get themselves some life defensively. Seton Hall early on in the second half, but a good time for them to get a stop to get some carryover from the defensive end. Work there, closing McDermott down. Brooks. And Seton Hall again. Boy, they've come out the more aggressive the, of the teams. Yeah, they're double teaming McDermott even on his cuts to the basket now. Wow. And that was Mobley trying to get it up there, but defensed well inside. Gibbs going up. Foul basket counts. And an and one and a timely field goal for Grant Gibbs of Creighton. In that little delayed break, you have McDermott coming down on the break, and here's the first drive that's going to go to the line. Good work. And Gibbs getting that. But that was the pass from McDermott that gets it across to Gibbs. Everybody kind of leans towards the three. You get it over to Gibbs on the left, and guys are retreating now as Gibbs is attacking. Brian Oliver with a second foul. And Creighton with the free throw. They are six for seven from the line, or make it seven for eight now, and lead 55-43, up again by 12. And Oliver from the baseline. Seem to have three blue shirts, defensive rebounding all the time, don't they? Here's McDermott, Bobley all over him. Gave up his dribble. Look at him post up there now. They clear it out for him. Double team comes in. Managa with three. Boy, Creighton challenged early, coming right back. And they challenged that double team again. So it's a difficult choice, especially if McDermott is going to be unselfish and willing to make a pass, which he does when he gets double team. So Creighton just keeps finding a way to answer. There's the double team. You kick it out to your partner out there. A little late with the transition. Bang. Well, tomorrow the NFL playoffs on Fox begin with the wild card matchup. The 49ers head to Lambeau Field to take on the Packers. Who will keep their championship dreams alive? Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Eastern. Only on Fox, the projected wind chill tomorrow, minus 20. Ice Bowl revisited. I thought Lambeau had a dome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you out there sometime, Jim. <laughs> anyway, San Francisco's won the last three meetings overall. But you know, last week's games don't mean anything. No, they don't, that's you, for sure. You know, I'm, you can throw them on the ice. Well, I know one guy who'll be inside here in the Northeast watching that game. I'm not going out. <laughs> it's too cold. But what a show it's going to be for the fans oh. who love it. Remember that Green Bay-Dallas Ice Bowl in 1967. And there is the drive and a foul as Fuquan Edwin will go to the free throw line.
Trying to end a six to nothing Creighton run. And we'll have a timeout. Back to Newark at the Prudential Center in a moment. And welcome back to Fox College Hoops presentation of Big East Basketball brought to you by the New York Life Insurance Company. And time for the New York Life Keep Good Going stat. How about Ethan Rocky leading in Big East in three points? Baskets, Brian Oliver second, but who has the edge today? Well, Brian Oliver's gonna have to find that rhythm in this late in the second half here, 15 minutes left. Seton Hall a little bit in trouble, but those two guys just flat out and how to shoot the basketball, and their teammates know that, and they set them up for that within the context of their offense. Interesting that uh, Doug McDermott scored 18 of Creighton's first 28 points, only six of their next 30, so other Blue Jays have been getting involved offensively as Edwin makes the first free throw. And interesting enough, too, Dick, that McDermott had 15 shots in that first half and only two here in the second just about five minutes of action. But considering that Creighton's only two points away from their largest lead of the right. game shows their teamwork. And there's a turnover. Here's Brooks. Nope. Coming back. And the ball put up. And another basket by Monaga. Jan Hens Monaga now with 14 points. And two players in double figures now. Monaga with 14 and 24, of course, for McDermott. Well, he's nicknamed the Canadian Red Bull, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he puts some energy out there. Biggest lead now for Creighton. And sometimes your best shot comes off that transition where there's a scramble and a little deflection. Outer hits the three. One of those big guys who come over from overseas can play inside and hit three. It's not a traditional jumper, but it's a set shot, but he can shoot it there a little about 33%, but he's been struggling this year because of the injuries. He had him last year. Gives the Seton Hall a touch of a lift. Here's Brooks finding an opening and a pretty layup changing hands in the process. That's what I think is the biggest adjustment that they've made with Greg McDermott. His team is now trying to come to the middle of the floor. They're trying to get layups instead of just settling. So they're showing that little variation of both ends of the floor. Devin Brooks now with the 11. Out of setting a screen for Gibbs. Yeah, they've got to give him room. He's got to go by the big guys out here. And missing the shot outside Edward. So settling for jumpers for Seton Hall, they were most effective when they penetrated. Yeah, just they have to get to the line more often, as I touched on before. They get to the line on the average 30 times. They're just not getting to the line at all against Creighton. And that's primary because Creighton's laying back just a touch. Gibbs guarding Brooks. Six on the shot clock. McDermott. Whoa. The three, and the three by Gibbs. And McDermott and out of the dick. Well, out of gets up first. Let's see, right. McDermott. He has to be helped up. And that's not the first time that Doug McDermott has been shaken up in this game. Yeah, it was a little bit of a crazy interchange just then, where I, be I believe it was the lower part. Oh, wow, you see, I think McDermott's damage is done when he slams his knees to the floor. And Alda, I think, is real lucky right there because McDermott falls across his body on the side and is fortunate that I'm watching Alda right now crossing half court, walking it off him and McDermott shaking hands to make sure both of them are okay. But, yeah, I... I that's a good move here without it. He's coming out. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good move here, just to double check the way whenever a body goes across your, your arm. Will Artino will replace him. Artino, 6'11", from Waukee, Iowa. Brayton with his biggest lead, still early in the second half. Back in the game was Jaron Cena. Edwin, long range, tough defense by Managa that time. Sure was, hand in his face, but more importantly, what do they do on the defensive glass? And Gibbs with another three. Creighton now 9 of 21 from three-point range. 
Mobley trying to post up inside, and they're going to call the Creighton foul. A pushing foul. You take a look now. He's going to Dermot coming down. See, I think he slams his right knee down, and Outa, I was watching Outa on the bench. See out his face right there, Dick? I was watching him on the bench. He's holding the left side of his left ankle. McDermott seems okay, and Outta seems fine. He's tightening up the shoelaces, but I think Outta was in much more difficult position just then because he couldn't defend the body no. coming against his leg. Avery Dingman comes in the game, replacing Managa for Creighton. Cena short on the three. And unfortunately for Seton, all Cena knocks one back as the right after the call was made, the last foul. And then he comes right back and misses one short. Eight minutes gone by. Deflection by Edwin. Ooh, layup. Brooks got it back in the quick one by Rocky. And Rocky hits a three, his second of the game. Brooks had a straight down the middle layup just then and didn't recognize it. Kicks it out to his partner for three. 21 point lead for Creighton. They've really opened it up after the early challenge by Seton Hall. But the Blue Jays have run off eight straight. Yeah, one of the things, too, with this 21-point lead is I love the flexibility that they're showing in their offense. It's a team that doesn't turn the ball over Creighton that much, only 11 per game. And what they're doing here is I think they're making an early statement in terms of playing Marquette first in the Big East pick, and they go home game and they play them, tough game. They out-rebound them. They come right back here against Seton Hall, undermanned, if you will, but showing a, a couple of styles of play. We talked about Doug McDermott, uh, not the first time he was shaken up. Let's go back to the first half. And in the first half, mixing it up, and he's going to go to the floor, and his own teammate's going to come down on him and smack him on the left shoulder right there. As he comes down, it looks almost as if a knee or, uh, gets him on the upper shoulder. And McDermott just kind of walks that one off. And now here's his latest maneuver coming down the lane. Bang, slams that. And as we all know, that wood gives a little bit, but not a whole lot. Well, you see the reaction like you did from Outer. You really worry about those. Oh, yeah, you could, you could, and I had that happen to me once when I was playing. Dick, you, if somebody fall against you like that, it's trouble. Well, Stefan Manga, in his first year at Seton Hall, has managed to penetrate and get in there for some good layups. He's got some good bulk. 6'6 six, six, junior. Lead is 19 now for Creighton. Great feed, Artino. And Will Artino had a great feed from Gibbs. And Will have a timeout. But that's good passing. They didn't get the shot or the hoop. But they're up. Ultimate Fighter is coming to Fox Sports 1 this January as fighters from Australia and Canada go head to head with national pride and a UFC contract on the line. The Ultimate Fighter Nations, Australia versus Canada, premieres January 15th only on Fox Sports 1. Dick, when I was assigned this game, I thought you and I, Stockton and Spinarkel, were going to have a little tussle. I, I thought, thought we so were going. Too. We have a Creighton basketball game against Seton Hall. These guys are playing it a little tough also, knocking McDermott down, so a little carryover. Get off me, McDermott's saying. I trained for this, <laughs> and now they tell me it was just a joke. That's it. <laughs> I trained about two minutes. <laughs> Could have been a Duke-Syracuse game, which they will play. Absolutely. A couple of times this year. How odd is that going to sound, Ooh. huh? Inside Outa. And Outa fouled by Artino. Great foul. See, now Creighton goes to five team fouls right now. So if Seton Hall can continue to plug it down deep, Try to turn this into a little bit of a free throw shooting contest from Seton Hall's perspective, because they only have one team foul against them. Jaron Cena gets it out to Harold's Carlos, who's in there now. So Cena, Carlos, Edwin, Auda, and Manga. There's Manga. He's been tough in there. Good ball fake. Good drive. Foul. Uh, Auda's taking his lumps, isn't he? Good work, though, out front. He hit one of those shots that we talked about from the three-point stripe, shows the ball nicely. That'll be the second foul on Grant Gibbs. So two things there, Dick. Number one is he makes a nice move and gets to the free throw line. Number two, he gets Creighton to go to six on the team foul number. So the next time Creighton fouls, regardless, they're going to go to the line at least shooting the one and one. 
Howda hits it, and uh, Gibbs is going to come back in. Sterling Gibbs, and going out will be Fuquan Edwin. Seton Hall is an active team, though, and I think they're going to be representative this year. Yeah, I do, too, and I think let's see what they do in terms of their activity right now defensively, too. But, you know, the injuries have thrown off their sequence. We talked about Teague not having Teague on the floor. That's a guy they pop the ball down to on the blocks. Without that, they got to find somebody to fill that void. Martino was inside. Gibbs now gets it to him. Brooks against Alda. Good ball movement. But missing the open shot is Avery Dingman. A little out of control there, Gibbs. And the foul against Seton Hall. So Gibbs missing the shot, as you mentioned, forced it a bit and then committing the foul. And that is uh, only the second team foul for Seton Hall. They're down 69 to 51. We're trailing. At the half, 45-33. This will be interesting to watch in the last 10 minutes of change here, Dick. The way Creighton plays, what is Seton Hall going to do to try to get them into a scramble offense? They're very methodical. You see, they're just taking their time. The last five possessions, they've been using the clock. I think Seton Hall's going to have to start throwing some half-court junk at them defensively. Brooks goes up, maintains control. See, they'll just wear you down with the basketball. There's not enough time. They'll take time off the clock. They don't even have McDermott on the floor right now. Five on the shot clock. Gibbs, and it's knocked away. Good defensive play by Cena. And putting it up at the buzzer, but missing was Gibbs. That was Grant Gibbs, and now Seton Hall. This will be a good time for them to mount whatever they have to mount the rest of the way. Exactly. You get a bucket now, and maybe that allows Kevin Willard to come back with some kind of trick defense, maybe a half-court trap, maybe a full court even. And McDermott at the scorer's table. They're going to bring back McDermott and Managa in a moment. They got three over there. It's like a hockey exchange. <laughs> Line change, right? <laughs> exactly. On the fly, which they had that in, the, in basketball. And the foul. Good movement there, and Manga will draw the foul. So here is the triumvirate of McDermott. Not so fast, Sailor. Uh, Managov coming in. Cut off the jam there for a second. <laughs> as well as Zerden will be coming in, too. How many other sports do you want me to work in here, Dick? <laughs> You're doing a good job. So here's Managa. He is giving them nice effort. Time that I've seen him play this year. He's really a hard-nosed guy. You touched on it before. Good size. Not afraid to mix it up. So McDermott, who sat for about four minutes, coming back in. McDermott has 24 points on 9 for 17 shooting and 7 rebounds. Four assists. Terrific all-round game for Doug McDermott. And Let's see after this free throw right here. Let's see what they're going to do, if they're going to do anything. Yep, looks like they're setting it up for a possible trap at half court here. Yep, and a back it off to go straight up, man. Zierden. Good shooter off the bench, but now it's McDermott. Settles back for the three, misses it. Cena. That's a break for Seton Hall. You can't leave him. McDermott wide open there. 16 point game. This is an opportunity for the Pirates. As I mentioned, every time they get fouled, now they go to the line. That's number eight against Creighton. And when they get to 10, it'll be the double bonus. So they're trying to take advantage. Well, here's the physical play. It's the new Big East. But I'm seeing a lot of the old Big East in terms of the aggressive play. Guys getting banged around. Competitive basketball. So here is Jaron Cena, good recruit, 6'2 freshman. His dad formerly played at Seton Hall and coached him in high school. And coming in will be Rocky, Ethan Rocky, and he'll replace Will Artino in the Creighton lineup. Out of both. Pirates have scored the last seven points. 
And can they quicken this pace up a little bit? Fans start to get behind them. There we go. They recognize, I think, also the importance of the next minute or so. Managot double team. And the air ball fired up by Isaiah Zierden. And Seton Hall will get the ball back. So trying to make their chance here work. 8.08 to go in regulation as Gibbs picks up his third foul. Sometimes, Dick, and I think more times than not, when you shoot an air ball, it gives the offensive rebounder a big advantage because the defender is looking for a body to block out. But that time, Gibbs did pull away and was caught. Uh, Carlos grabbed them, pushed them away, and that's why he got the ball so cleanly. Harold's Carlos from Riga, Latvia, a junior. And all of a sudden, Seton Hall starts hitting these free throws. They've worked their way back into this game right now because of the free throw line and because they've been aggressive. As I mentioned, only two fouls on Seton Hall, so they can be aggressive at the defensive end of the floor and nine fouls on Creighton right now, so double bonus looming for Seton Hall. Taking advantage of it. Yep. Seton Hall only two free throw attempts in the first half. 14 right now in the second. And the fans here getting a little bit more active again, which you can see body language. You can tell Seton Hall knows that they have to step up and play solid man-to-man -man defense this trip. Down to 12. This is a patient, great team, though. Double team on McDermott. Five on the shot clock, losing the ball was Chapman, and on the turnover, Seton Hall with another chance. Take your time now, no need to rush. Get yourself a good shot. And out it goes in, blocking. They call a block on Rage. And another foul, that could have gone either way. It sure was very, very close. It was very, very close. Rocky with his third foul, and Seton Hall making a run to get it down to 10. They have outscored Creighton 9 to nothing on this latest run. Seton Hall making a run here against Creighton, which at one point had a 21-point lead, but the Blue Jays have not scored in the last four minutes and 21 seconds, and Seton Hall will go to the line to shoot two. And obviously, a good opportunity. You have to be able to hit your free throws and knock them back. Seton Hall as a team at about 75%. So they're a very good free throw shooting team. Out on the line right now. Who's an 85% free throw shooter, even though he hasn't taken many this year. Well, it's also helped the Pirates, the fact that they have not turned it over in this second half. 12 for 15 from the line in the second half that they're going, as you mentioned, to the line only twice in the first. Yeah, and with that timeout, if I'm Kevin Willard thinking it through, you have two team fouls right now. Oh, tough way to miss both of those right there to try to give yourself a little life. You can play more aggressively and take chances. And with Creighton at the offensive end, Dick, what I've been telling my guys is drive the ball. If we get a charge or two called on us, I don't really care. Be smart and drive. There he goes, McDermott. And the tip in. And the field goal. I think that was McDermott who yes, got a hand on it. So they hadn't scored in more than four and a half minutes, but McDermott now with 26 over his season's average of 24 plus. Interesting who they go to when they need a bucket. No surprise. Ball knocked away, and it's last touch by Creighton. And he takes this. Watch him get his shoulders around the defender. He sees the double team, and now he gets up there with his left hand. Just. Nice little touch. He's got terrific hands. You can tell the way he catches it on the move and gets himself ready. Out of trying to post up, but Gibbs can't get it to him. Six on the shot clock. Cena wending his way in, fires it up, and the rebound by McDermott. Creighton looks like they've steadied themselves. Out of missed two free throws, could have made it a 10 point lead. Creighton comes back and scores. So now they're up by 14 with the ball. I agree with you, Dick, and I'm, I'd be shocked if they take a bad shot right here in terms of using that great words. They've steadied themselves. Mm, maybe a little quick. McDermott. So now Cena. Six minutes remaining in regulation. Great shot, using his body was Gibbs. 
Yeah, Gibbs looks to draw the, uh, the, uh, the attention of the guys defensively and looks to get to the line first. Fortunate for that time, he came finishing through and made the shot. Nice post up. 15 points for Gibbs, but McDermott comes right back with a field goal inside on a good pass. Well, that's the name of the game for this team is the passing, especially inside. And so McDermott with an and one possibility. And he understands how to move without the basketball. Watch all of a sudden now. He's nowhere to be seen, and he pops into the screen. That's because he's learned how to move without the basketball, and the timing is absolutely perfect to your point in terms of getting the pass when he can catch it and just turn and go with it. And he got a great feed from Austin Chapman, who's been in foul trouble today with three, but he's in there now, and why not? So he picks up four. He's their best point guard. Absolutely. He's the guy who runs the show for them. Doesn't turn the basketball over either. Makes good decisions. So again, it's 14. Here's Carlos. So Seton Hall trying to get back in with threes. And uh, and why not? It's worked for him in this game. They shot a pretty good percentage from the out there. They move it without the basketball. Well, McDermott's being held. It's okay, though, because it's only the fourth team foul. Seton Hall, though, has to take advantage of the Creighton fouls. Double bonus for Seton Hall now, and uh, Edwin will check back in. And Oliver has Cena and Carlos go out of the game. So right now we have a new group in, and a very active group. Kukwan, and that drops in field goal by Chapman. First of the game. I love the way Creighton has answered this little run by Seton Hall. They didn't get really rattled much at all. And that's why they don't take bad shots. And they're well coached. And he understands that he doesn't push the panic button on the sidelines. And they don't push the panic button on the floor. Out of foul. No basket. But he'll go to the line to shoot two on the double bonus. Interesting. It all coincided with Doug McDermott's return. Not that he's been taking all the shots, but his presence has really helped the others. Exactly. And when he's moving without the basketball, that's when he frees up his teammates for opportunities. And I had it when I was speaking with his dad, Greg, about that. He's learned it. And, and when you learn how to do that move without the basketball, he's so good at coming off screens that sooner or later, somebody's going to be open because of his good cuts away from the ball. Rocky, by the way, with four fouls, and he leaves the game as Will Artino replaces him. Rocky has scored eight and has two three-point field goals. Remember, he's right up there at the top of the nation in that department. So it's 75-61. Time starting to become a factor here. And time will not affect this Creighton basketball team. Watch out. This is where Seton Hall, they're going to have to make some decisions soon, Dick, in terms of coming out and looking for quicker double-team opportunities. Manga fighting through the screen nicely that time on McDermott. Now out of with him. Ball knocked away, but McDermott gets it back and Gibbs gets a piece of that pass. And Gibbs with a superb defensive play. And now fouled on the baseline drive. That's what Gibbs does so well. Makes things happen off the dribble. And that's exactly what Seton Hall needs right now. Down 14 points, 4.05 left. How do you stop the clock? Well, here's that scramble at half court. Seton Hall with three players in white shirts looking for deflections, tips. When they get it back to Gibbs, what does he do? He takes the baseline and gets his shoulder around the defender. Sterling Gibbs makes the first. And checking into the game, Devin Brooks who has played an outstanding game today, has 11 points on 5 for 10 shooting, 4 rebounds as well for Creighton. Gibbs gets to the line a lot, Dick, and he makes them a lot too. He's an 85% free throw shooter. So it's down to 12 as we get 4 minutes remaining in regulation. 22 free throws, 17 of 22 for Seton Hall. That's where they're doing a lot of the business today. The stop is crucial for Seton Hall. The double team in McDermott again in the paint. Somebody's got to be open. Eight on the clock. Managa for three. Whoa. And the foul 
will be called against Seton Hall under the basket, an elbow, and so Creighton gets a break here. And it is on Sterling Gibbs. Yeah. And a timeout. Boy, this is a tough break here for Seton Hall because they get the forced outside shot. And look at the banging down deep. McDermott trying to get around. Pretty physical. Wow. <laughs> And welcome back here to Newark, New Jersey, and our Land Rover player of the game, none other than Doug McDermott of Creighton. And in that first half, he was sensational, getting 22 of his 28 points in a variety of ways, using the great post-up moves, the footwork to establish the catches, and he makes it so much easier for his teammates because he's an easy target to get the basketball to. 28 points on 11 of 21, and the only thing you could say, you know, on one side is that he hit 45 free throws in a row before he missed one. Had the school record. And now Creighton in no hurry to set up their offense. Yeah, that's why now Seton Hall looks like they're sitting back. What are they? Well, because Creighton's not doing it. Here comes the double team. They're not showing anything defensively yet. But this is what they need to do, start trapping. And Gibbs gets it. Grant Gibbs with Grant the lay-in. Good understanding there by Creighton. They were patient. They came over. They looked. I mean, they were, I think they were thinking the same thing I am. What is Seton Hall doing? They're just laying back, waiting for us to do something. Nice hands. Gibbs loses it to Brooks. Brooks ahead of the field. They'll pull this back out. The other thing is you double team sometime. You're going to get a free man inside. Scramble for the loose ball. And a Creighton timeout. Did they call one? I think it was when Brooks came over the top just then and finally got possession. And Greg McDermott was yelling out timeout, I think. And a timeout called by Creighton. Well, Big East basketball presented by New York Life Insurance Company returns tomorrow as Providence takes on 11th-ranked Villanova. Coverage begins tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox Sports 1. It's going to be an interesting Big East season because still searching for an identity, I think, is this league, right? I think so, too. Yeah, and I think, you know, with the, with the newer teams that are in it, I think when you look at it, Villanova came out of the blocks pretty strongly, didn't they? And creating a team that's going to surprise some people. I don't know what, maybe not that's the, a bad word because people think they're, they are very good. They're going to play and be competitive. And you get that first look at the first game or so. So Georgetown over St. John's in a route. Nice start with Georgetown, and I don't know, it, it's so early. You just, you know, what, what one or two teams are going to kind of climb to the middle and higher, and which teams are going to fall through. It's a lot of fun in conference basketball. And the great thing about the Big East, home and home. You're going to play everyone home and away. And that really intensifies rivalries. Here's McDermott baseline, one-hander drops. And so McDermott now with his fifth 30-point game of the season. And a 16-point lead, nearly two minutes remaining in the game. Gibbs is bumped by Brooks. We have spoken about him all afternoon. Look at him now. Delay, delay, now all of a sudden, where is he? He understands the timing, catches it, soft touch, but he understands how to position himself beforehand to get his shoulders ahead of the defender, get his footwork going. Well, if you're a guard and you see McDermott moving without the basketball, just be ready because he's going to be open and it's a pleasure to play with a guy who understands how to move without it. So Gibbs misses the free throw. McDermott played on the U.S. team in the World University Games as Mobley checks back in for Seton Hall, preseason Big East Player of the Year, consensus All-American player. He's going to be right up there in all of those categories. Phil Martelli, interesting, the head coach at St. Joseph said, He's Larry Bird-like, an interesting comment. I think there are some similarities to him in terms of the way he shoots the ball, the way he has an awareness of what's going on. I'm not so sure he's the rebounder, though, in big games that Larry Bird was. Because And you've called, I remember listening to you call many of Larry Bird playoff games, but go back and look at Bird in big games and see what his, forget about his scoring and pass, see what his rebounds were. He was usually upper teens in big games as far as rebounding was concerned. I love the way he played free safety on defense, though, huh? <laughs> exactly. Anticipating yeah. passes. And here's Brooks trying to draw the foul and couldn't. 
but they managed to work the shot clock down to just about zero. Creighton leading the Big East, averaging 82 points a game. They're right on that brink right now. And a, another foul on Creighton. It'll be two shots at the line. And it will be on Brooks. So Creighton headed for their seventh straight victory. They have not lost since December 1st when they lost to George Washington. A shocker, a home loss, 60-52. to And then San Diego State beat them a couple of days before that. And again, as you see, coming back in Jaron Cena and Harold Carlos for Seton Hall. All but one of Creighton's victories have been by double figures. This is a team that lost to set center Gregory and Echen Echenique of New Jersey native. So they lost some bulk inside. Yep. Here's Brooks. Manica. No foul. Carlos landed on him lightly. Two on the shot clock. And they're going to call the foul. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for Creighton. They go play DePaul, which gave Georgetown a pretty good battle last week and uh, New Year's Eve, actually, then home games against Xavier and Butler. Uh, I think Big East teams are going to have fun going into Creighton to play, too, in front of that 17,500-ish. Loud, great exciting. Court, yeah, it? oh, it's great college basketball to have that. Jared Cena on the free throw line. For Seton Hall, this will end their three-game winning streak. And uh, all four of their losses were done by a total of 11 points. But for Kevin Willard, uh, this was a widespread win for Creighton, although Seton Hall did make a run in the second half. Yeah, we, we, I think you have to go back to with Seton Hall, you know, with, the, with some of the problems they've had with Edwin, who's been hurt with his, his knee, Teague not here. So it's a different type. They've had Kevin Willard the last couple of years has really had problems with the injuries. Nothing you can do about it but fight through it, and his team plays hard. But it would have been interesting to see a healthy Teague on the floor in terms of what Seton Hall would have done at the offensive end. Eight on the clock. Rocky misses a three-point attempt. Interesting that Seton Hall came out to double team, I think, only once. Right. When they were trailing. And a foul. Let's take a look at the Pirates and what they have upcoming. They've got a tough one, even though it's home. Villanova will be their next game on the 8th of January. Back to three tough ones. I was going to say, <laughs> where are the easy ones yeah. on that schedule, Dick? you got the three ats, Marquette, Georgetown, and St. John's. Let me think which one of those I really think I want to. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cupcake. Pin my hopes on. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Stefan Manga on the line. So Creighton with a victory. They opened up a 21-point lead, and Seton Hall made a run to the point where they were two free throws away from narrowing the deficit to 10. But they missed two free throws when the margin was 12, and that's all she wrote. And I just really like the balance of Creighton, a team that has the reputation as a three-point shooting team, and they balance the attack. All right, that'll be it. Creighton wins 79 to 66 for Jim Spinarkle. Dick Stockton saying so long from Newark. Right now, here's Mike Hill. All right, fellas.